Hello and a welcome back. In the previous lectures of this section, you learned how to add basic primitives to the A-frame scene, how to place and transform them in the 3D space, and uh, finally how to modify their appearance using several properties of the material component. In this lecture, we are going to break primitives down and further examine entities and components. So here I've already preloaded the asset that the A image primitive is displaying as a background for the 3D objects in our scene. And I've also added an A box primitive with no HTML attributes at all. That as you know by now, if I move back, you can see at its default position. In lecture four, you learned that under the hood, primitives are entities with a semantic name. Box in this case that have a preset bundle of components with default values. And this is the reason why the A-Box primitive renders a white cube with a width, height and depth of 1 meter by default. Ok, just let me move our primitive in front of the camera and slightly to our left so that we can move on to entities. So, position component, minus 1, 0.5 and minus 4 and I'm reloading the page so to add entities to your scene you can use the a entity element and uh, when I place it at the same position of the a box primitive but to our right you can see that nothing happens, and this is due to the fact that by themselves entities have no appearance, behavior or functionality. If you have web design or front-end web development experience, you can think of them as empty divs. Therefore, entities neither do nor render anything until you attach components to them. In example, if you wanted to recreate the A-Box primitive, first you need to give the entity a shape. And you can do this with the geometry component. And the type of geometry that this entity will be is determined by the primitive property. That by default has the box value. So that's why this box popped up as soon as I attached the geometry component to the entity. But this entity can have uh, any other type of geometry that you'd like to. In example, you could give it the shape of a cone. Or a ring. Or a sphere. In our case, uh, we are happy with the box value though. Here you can see that our entity comes with what looks like a default color. And on top of that, if I move around, you can also notice that our box is not affected by the lighting conditions. And you might think that again some default values are being applied to the entity, but actually this is happening because we haven't modified its material at all, and a frame is just rendering the shape in our scene to make it visible. Indeed, if I reload the page a few times, you can see that our box will be given a random color every time. So let's modify its appearance and you can do this with the material component. And well, it is quite evident that the color has immediately changed, but before I fill the component with its property, let's have a closer look at our entity. That now you can see is affected by the lighting conditions in our scene, because uh, as soon as I attached the material component to it, the entity started rendering its shape using the standard material that as you learned in lecture 8 is a value of the shader property and then the entity also started displaying the default value of its color property that is white well we have now recreated our a box primitive from an empty entity so i'm adding a comment here And let's play a bit more with uh, breaking primitives down. So here we have the image that I also used for the A-curved image primitive in the previous lecture. 
and I said that under the hood the A-curved image primitive is an open-ended, double-sided cylinder with texture mapped to the inside. So let's break this primitive down. I'll start by creating a copy of the box entity. I update its comment. And then I start modifying both its shape and appearance using the values that we calculated for the centered single curved image for which I set an angle subtended by the arc of 90 degrees. So, cylinder, theta length 90, theta start 180 minus 45, so 135. Radius 0 0.707. Height 0 0.833. Open ended. True. Then I change its position to 0. 1.5 and 0 and when I add the side property to the material component and set its value to double we can finally see the curved image right in front of us. Then I reference to the image using the ID in the DOM selector format and map the texture to the inside with the scale component, setting the x-axis to a negative value. As you can see, the image looks dark, so to avoid that it'll be affected by the lighting conditions, I modify the shader property and give the entity a flat material. And finally, I'm going to scale our curved image up, so it'll bend around our two boxes. Then, 10 and 10. Ok, let's have a look at our scene now. And uh, to conclude this lecture, since components are data containers, if I go back to our boxes and change the color and height values of the entity to red and 1.5 and then do the same with the a box primitive so color red height 1.5 we can finally state that primitives are entities with a semantic name that map HTML attributes to component data. So, this is how you can break primitives down and the logic and the syntax of entities and components in a frame. With this lecture you have completed section 3 of this course and by now you should be able to add basic meshes to the A-frame scene and to place and transform them where and how you'd like to giving them the exact appearance that you may need to prototype and design your custom web VR scenes. I hope you have enjoyed my A-Frame course so far and I look forward to seeing you again in the next sections and lectures that at the time of this recording are a work in progress, where you will be learning a lot of cool things that you can do with A-Frame. So thank you for enrolling in my course and I'll see you soon.